Blessed afternoon, collective. I'm still congested, but I can't. <laughs> I can't not pull a reading. I can't do it. I can't not pull a reading for another day. It's driving me fucking crazy. <sighs> it's it's just been. I've been too exhausted to really focus and do it. But I've been wanting to every single day. This is. Just, I'm addicted at this point. I mean it. <laughs> This is a coping mechanism for me. It's all kinds of things. It is my form of self-expression and not doing it for a week has been maddening. So <laughs> I apologize for uh, the coughing and stuff, but I'm on the mend from whatever the crap that was. Um, a reset period, a, a forced period of rest by the universe is what it felt like. Mandated rest. Uh, and as with all things, I have no choice but to trust. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could fight against it and create more misery for myself, but that's the only option I have, is the free will to choose suffering or not. So I'm gonna go with not, because I like to feel good. Um, and feeling good is good. That's that's how I see that. So it's just what it is. It happened for the right reasons uh, to rest. And from what I understand, this is a part of the energy in every way. And, and you know, reinforcing that the human aspect is not in control of anything and doesn't need to be. And in fact, benefits from the releasing of that control. Uh, there's been a lot of anxiety, just tension, this building tension, this feeling of like a slow grind that's been just, oh, so excruciatingly slow, like fingernails on a chalkboard, as, as slow as you could drag them. And it's been maddening. It's this building of pressure is what I feel, at least I don't care if anybody else feels it. <laughs> it's what I feel. And uh, it's been driving me fairly nuts. We are today on the 10th of July, at the present time of recording, experiencing Mars moving into Virgo, as well as Mercury, which is in Cancer, forming a conjunction with Pluto that's retrograde in Capricorn. And I believe on the same day, I'm not sure, but within some period of that, Mercury moves into Leo. It's like a final interaction with Pluto before it changes signs there. Uh, and it changes signs just as, well, a couple days before, before we actually enter Cancer season with the sun. It's so much. Or, well, cancer. Cancer. No, see, I'm not right. Uh, I'm not right. Cancer. Cancer is happening right now. <laughs> I just can't even. It's forming a sextile with Uranus and Taurus. Fuck it. Uh, I don't care. Um, yeah. It's just. It's confusing. I feel confused and overwhelmed and tired and no I don't edit shit I don't care if I say something that's wrong so I said something wrong <laughs> I can correct myself shit happens it's all pushing and building up to the north node changing into Aries and it, it, it just feels like it's right there it's right on the edge it's just it's a melting it's a pulsating, it's an oozing, it's a boiling, it's not real comfortable, but it's happening, and it's it's happening slowly in this just drawn out way that is excruciating but unmissable. You just can't miss it. If it was something you thought you could avoid, too bad, too bad. It's here, and it's not just being shown, it's it's being just slowly peeled apart so there's no way <laughs> there's no way to stop it there's no way to look away i don't know i want to pull on this energy because i want to that's it uh 
emotions that have been experienced, that have been felt in the past several days, all of them, every last one. A lot of angst, certainly. Um, this, this indistinct sense of grieving and melancholy. Anxiety, for sure. Uh, the tension. Fear. I mean, all of these are sort of fear-based as well. well. It's a lot of that. It is the masculine aspect just writhing. It's just, it's splitting apart. And it's writhing in its own demise and discontent. Uh, but it's self-destructing. Because it wants to. Because it's time for it to dismantle itself. It sees how it has gotten in its own way. It's only seeing that more and more and more. And it doesn't want to. It is defying its own desires by doing so. Um, so it realizes there is one option. And that option is not to listen to itself anymore. The only way to win the game that it wants to win is to stop playing it. <sighs> so, yeah. I'm gonna pull on this. I'm still loopy. Uh, it's just what it is. I'm all over the place. I am in my own state of tension and uh, really coming to terms with being uncomfortable. Uncomfortable around specific persons. learning to accept and acknowledge that, that it's okay to not want to be around someone, that it, it is not equated to a judgment of their worthiness, or their deserving, or their value, any of those things, that I can simply not enjoy <laughs> the experience of being around a person and that has no implications whatsoever about the quality of their being. They are every bit divine, loved, valuable, good. They're a good person through and through. Worthy of blessing, worthy of joy, worthy of everything that they desire. I feel that. I feel love and appreciation even for this person. I also feel that I don't enjoy communicating with them very much. I don't enjoy being around them very much. There is a heaviness to the energy. There is a constant stream of negativity that I, I recognize stems from pain, stems from a deep place of wounding and hurt and I just don't care for it. I just don't. That's it. I'm gonna pull some cards now. Oh, what the hell are we doing? What the hell are we talking about? Oh, cards got stuck. The Queen of Pentacles. Gosh, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, cards. I missed you. can't deny this or there's an urgency there's a thirstiness i just feel the fawn the fawn wanting that milk oh yeah that's an urgency i mean that's a gotta go gotta go it's already going we're already on the move we we need some milk we need some nourishment for the soul it's beyond an intention being set it's it's happening it's coming in yeah there's that anxiety and urgency as well. It's, I got, I got one choice here. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty from the soul level. The soul lives on emotion, on love, which is cups in the tarot. In this case, we're talking about milk. And that's what it is. It's if, if I want to get good, if I want to feel good in myself, there is one option. There is one choice, it's to get out of my own way and to let the feminine in, to let the feminine energy rise, to relinquish this 
death grip of control. Whatever we think we're controlling has control over us. That's always how that works. Anything that you are trying to control or think that you're in control of really is just controlling you. The second that you relinquish control over it, it releases you and you are truly free and truly stable. <sighs> trying to control, yeah, and this is the painful truth being learned. Trying to control, to hold back, to repress, to manipulate, to hold on to all of these things just keeps us in tension it just builds this anxiety it just it rips us apart and we can't take that anymore we need this nourishment we need the cups i mean it is emotional fulfillment the nine cups book ending the queen of pentacles which is exactly what we we're talking about yes we're talking about milk in this case these cups are filled with milk it's a soul nourishing milk What's underneath that? Five of Swords. I'm just curious. And the Eight of Cups. Yeah. There's one option. <laughs> we can't we can't shortcut this. You can't just go to the store and get the same milk that you're gonna get from Mama Deer. They don't have it there. You can't get it from anywhere else. There is one place to get this happiness that you can't you can't shortcut it. First of all, it takes leaving behind all the other false victory options really recognizing them as false recognizing i can't get this soul nourishment anywhere else it's not here it's not where i am i have to go and get it and that means going to the feminine this i i'm always talking mostly about internal energy but it applies at every level and yes i am pulling on the soulmate cycle so it is what it is but it is the masculine energy Again, nothing to do with gender, never anything to do with gender. We all have masculine and feminine. Plenty of female identifying people are masculines, are masculine energy predominantly. Most of the world is, is masculine energy. Um, anyway, the masculine energy within us, which wants to be happy, that's all anybody wants is to feel good, right? Truly. Everything that we think we want, we think we want because of the way we think it will make us feel. We think it will make us feel good. In reality, it is not that thing that makes us feel anything. The source of happiness is not in those things, any of them. It's always entirely within. You can have that thing and not be happy. You can be without that thing and be happy. It's not correlated whatsoever. The source of satisfaction is within. That comes from union with yourself with your soul, which is your feminine energy, balancing your own masculine and feminine energy. That's where good feeling comes from. That is the source. Source is the source of satisfaction. It's you. It's within you. It comes from surrendering. It comes from trusting. It comes from opening up to the fullness of what you are and understanding that you are the entire universe. You are supported by the entire universe. You are loved divinely, protected and provided for. When you start flowing that feeling and trusting it, it feels good. That's the key. And that's where this true satisfaction comes from. No place else. No place else is happiness found but within the self. Within the self, granted by the feminine the feminine aspect it is brought the cups are filled by allowing the flow of feminine energy which the masculine tries to block that's what ego does uh, what's on top but the pipelines are open it's just the, it's time i mean it's divine timing i just get alignment i'm not even feeling anything else of just the the pipelines are open it's flowing it's all the signs are pointing to this. You want to get the satisfaction, you want to feel good, you go to the source. The source is the soul. That is the feminine energy. That means feeling. It means opening the heart. It means trusting. It means leaning into intuition, into emotion. It means sharing the truths and expressing openly, honestly, freely. There's a little baby squirrel. 
Oh, it's cute. Anyway, let's pull a reading. <laughs> Little baby squirrel gracing this reading. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Uh, something of innocence and excitement there. Exuberance and again, trusting. I'm getting that page of wands feeling. Uh, the page of wands is fearless. You remember that feeling when we were kids and we were exploring things. Before school fucked us all up, and I'm not blaming school, it's been a system, it's been a program in place for a very long time. School fucked up those people <laughs> long before. Anyway, that feeling of being supported. We all knew as kids, we knew we were here to have fun. We're here to have fun. We're here to explore. That's what the soul is here to do. Explore, adventure. It knows that it's safe. It knows it's supported. It knows it's just here to keep turning over rocks and seeing what's underneath them. And if that one has a scorpion, ooh, that's okay. That's okay. I got cards falling out of the deck. You're protected. The universe finds a way. You put that rock back. You're not afraid to pick up the next rock. Next one's got a cool little beetle underneath it. I mean, you just keep learning and exploring. And you know that even the destruction of the physical form is not... It's not a threat. It's not a big deal. It is not a harm to your being. Even the destruction of the physical form is no harm to your being. There is no harm that can be you. There is no risk, there is no danger, there is no threat that exists in all of the universe, in all of existence. Because it's far more than just this universe as we know it. There's that page of pentacles, that thirsty little page of pentacles. This is the fawn drinking from the mama deer. And the card that fell out is this three of pentacles. Ah, uh, there's a, there's a, I don't know why I feel a dismantling here. Um, there is something being taken apart so that something new can be built. A, a restructuring uh, is what I feel from this. And it is separate. It's separate from the reading. Hanged man. I mean, that's a powerful new perspective. That That is lessons being learned here. And it is that sort of peeling open of the eyes of you're gonna look at this there's no looking oh yeah oh my god big time with the sun underneath yeah you're gonna look at this there's no missing this stand where you are and face the truth ace of cups and feel it too feel it big time <sighs> acknowledging feelings Acknowledging that they're there, that they exist. It doesn't matter how hard we repress them. They're real. They're there. <laughs> it's time to acknowledge the existence of these feelings and let them flow. Holding back a feeling, pretending it's not there, trying to push it away. All that does is keep it lodged in your energy. All it does is keep it stuck there. That emotion is just energy that wants to express. That's it. And if it feels good, it's also a part of your guidance system. If it feels good, it is it is good. <laughs> it's guiding you to move towards the things that feel good. And if it feels bad, that's contrast. You acknowledge this feels bad. Again, it's not a moral indictment. It's not a judgment of this thing. This thing is not wrong because it feels bad. It's not even bad. <laughs> it's just information. It's data. It's there to be contrast. The hot stove that burns you is not doing anything wrong. It's not evil. It's not malicious or malevolent. It's there to teach you. If you put your hand on the hot stove, you get burned. You, you damage yourself. This is maybe not something that you want to do. Don't touch the hot stove. Ouch, it hurts. Because it's, it's not good for you. It's not there to punish you it's just there to help you gather information that's it the same way that you get a sunburn out in the sun the sun's not punishing you 
<laughs> it's just information. It's teaching you, oh, maybe this is this is too hot for me. Maybe I put on some sort of layer. I put on some kind of protection. I stay in the shade. Whatever it is, you know, now I know. I don't just keep standing in the sun and either expecting it not to burn me or expecting that I'll just stop burning at some point or expecting that it's it's okay that I'm burning. I'll I'll just deal with it. I'll get over it. This is fine. At some point, maybe I'll even like it. Maybe I'll even start liking sunburns. I, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do is just like getting burned by the sun. Maybe that's it. No. No, it's none of those things. <laughs> it's there to hurt so that you feel the hurt. And then acknowledge it and move away from it. Actually let that guide <coughs> excuse me, your manifestation the other direction. You acknowledge, oh, this doesn't feel good. This is not what I want. So what is it that I do want? Now I'm facing this thing, I have this clarity about what I don't want. Because of that, I instantly have greater clarity of what it is I do want. And now I can just easily pivot that direction and go, ah, there we go, it's over here. I have my information. Thank you, contrast. Thank you, sunburn. Thank you, hot stove, for showing me that this was not it and guiding me, giving me the direction and the inspiration, the impulse to move towards what it is. <laughs> Couldn't do that without this. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's time to appreciate, I'm actually putting this back, to appreciate contrast and on the flip side of that, appreciate how the contrast is showing us what we do like. Now we have greater clarity about that. Yeah, it's not so confusing anymore. When you let the contrast be contrast, then it's not this crapshoot of, well, I don't really know. If you can't know what you want without knowing what you don't want. Okay, it, it always serves us to experience contrast. It always serves us moving towards and understanding and expanding our definition, our experience of what it is that is truly desired. That's the point of contrast. When you don't let yourself experience contrast, then you get this confusion. You get overwhelmed. Well, and that's why you got to go out in the world and, and mix it up and try some things. That's what we're here to do. That's why there are no mistakes. That's why nothing ever goes wrong. It's always only ever to your benefit. You try a bunch of flavors of ice cream. Some of them you're not going to like. <laughs> Now you know, you, you're refining your palate with that, you know? That, that's exactly how all of this is. It's all a refining of our palate. That's what this is designed for. Yeah, this is, mm, wait, what's underneath that? The moon. How do I feel this? Not putting in, I don't want to say not putting in the work. That is sort of what this card implies, but it, it's really the work, again, is not an effort given. It's an allowance. It's an allowance and a willingness to accept and to look at everything that comes up. To not stuff it down. To not distract ourselves from it. That only results in this feeling of overwhelmment and this confusion and this lack of clarity about our own emotions. How can you be clear about your own emotions when you refuse to feel them? Really, truly, if you want clarity on what you feel, you gotta feel. You gotta let the feelings feel, bro. <laughs> it's just, and that means not distracting yourself from them, not running from them. That's how we disentangle ourselves. There is this, this feeling of confusion that is, the energy is here to help us pull apart it is that slow pulling apart and it, a part of that, a big part of that is this revealing of emotions. Everything that was stuck is being released for our benefit, but it's being released slowly because it only really benefits us if we take the time to look at it. It's not really to our benefit to just have a magic wand waved and oh, all of your emotions that were stuck just are released now. That's not really what you want. It's not. It, it might sound like it, but it's not because 
those feelings were felt for a reason. They're there to be expressed through you. There's no shortcutting this. They're there to be felt. Um, I'm going to shuffle a little bit more and then I'm going to pull the reading because it's nice and long. But there's a lot. There's a lot in the energy that I have been feeling and wanting to express. Uh, yeah. A lot of unhappiness and there's recognizing when we're sitting in unhappiness because there's different ways that we generate suffering. I mean, it's always through resistance, which means the answer is always surrender in some form, but it's not one way. It, it is always playing by ear. The path of least resistance is constantly shifting. Oh, geez. And is unique, is nuanced to each person, each moment, each situation, everything. It, it's never one answer. Even in the situation, it's not one answer. It's line up with your feelings and then... God, the Queen of, Queen of Pentacles came back at the bottom for our overall energy. What's underneath that? Wow, I pulled... Okay, this wanted to show itself. It's an Eight of Wands, but actually underneath that Queen is Four of Pentacles. It's, it's a holding back that is no longer able to be held back. Uh, I mean, there is a f this feeling of tension, and again, that realization that surrender is the only answer. That we're gonna stay miserable here if we just keep holding on to this. Oh god, I'm not gonna be able to talk over the lawnmower. <laughs> it is what it fucking is. Ah, uh, yeah, um... Uh, something also about the, the pentacles are not it. We need the real thing. We need the nourishment. You, money won't buy you love. Um, I can hear the Beatles ringing in my head right now. Uh, it won't buy you love and it will not buy mama's milk at the store. I'll tell you that. So I had cards that jumped out. First one, which is face up, is the two of swords. Um, I don't know where these go. This one apparently goes here. And this one goes in the middle, and it's an Ace of Cups that I picked up reversed. <sighs> How do I feel about that? I'm gonna leave it reversed. I mean, it, it... We've kept the emotion in for so long. We've stuffed it down. And it, it won't stay down. It just, it won't. <laughs> Um, for a long time we've done the quote-unquote practical thing we, we misuse that word the word practical does not mean logical it just means that which you are putting into practice that's it that, that's, that's practical <laughs> it's the thing that you're doing uh, and the thing that we've been doing is try in every other way to get satisfaction looking for the satisfaction in everything other than the free expression of our own emotions and the following of our own emotions. We have, we've shut this down, shut down the feminine aspect for so long and it's, it's coming back to bite us. I mean, everybody, I mean, society, because that's how it was always going to work. This is all a part of the plan. We, we shut down the emotions, we tried, we went all the way with ego, and it was always going to result in this self-destruction of ego, where the feminine just explodes to the surface. Because we can't keep it down anymore. What happens when you repress this energy, this flowing energy? Energy just wants to flow. That's all it does. Self just wants to express, energy just wants to flow when we stop it from flowing, we can only hold it back for so long. It's not an indefinite thing. Nope. It is a constant erosion. And that is evidenced everywhere in our physical world. In nature, you can... A dam only lasts for so long, and they're constantly trying to maintain that shit. They have to be continuously monitoring and, and rebuilding sections of it and adding to it and all of this and that and 
eventually that shit is just gonna crack. I, and that's what it is. This It's cracking. <laughs> uh, you know, a volcano. We think it's dormant. We think it's suppressed. We think it's, it, it's never gonna go off again. It's just a matter of time. It is just a matter of time. Because, again, it goes back to this free will. We have the free will to choose suffering. So, how long are we going to choose suffering? Really. So how free is that will, really? We can keep choosing suffering until we eventually get fucking tired of it. Because we're not made to suffer, and we know that. We're not here to suffer, we're here to feel good. There's got to be another way. There is another way. That way is letting this emotion flow. And it, it's coming to the surface. It's it's being realized whether anybody wants to realize it or not yeah it's just happening it's just happening <sighs> there's a lot there I'm freaking sweating <sighs> something is making sense or it's at least it's just it's getting through one way or another that what's making us sick in every way is keeping all of this shut down, is holding everything in, it's poisoning us, holding in a truth, holding in emotion, it literally makes you sick, it toxifies your energy, it can create physical disease. I'm not saying that is always specifically the case. Sometimes illness happens. <laughs> and that is a part of a different lesson. It's a part of a different opportunity for you. But the withholding of energy <sighs> turns it sour. And it, it can manifest into even physical illness. It will eventually start to rip things apart because it needs to flow. It's like trying to keep lightning in a bottle. It, it starts to discharge because it needs to, because it's actually, it's gonna explode. It's gonna really do a number on your life, keeping that in there. And so it tries to discharge in little ways. The universe tries to help you balance that energy in little ways. Withholding of energy is the accruing of karma. You, you are not letting energy flow that means you're keeping it out of balance. At higher dimension, that energy has already moved. When you are holding back from following that flow, you put yourself out of alignment with yourself, with the universe, with the entire <laughs> infinite resources of creative intelligence. And you create an imbalance, you create a gap between yourself and yourself. And all yourself ever wants is to close that gap, is to reunify you with you. That's where the good feeling is, that's where the resolution, the resolve of that imbalance is, which we feel as, as good feelings. And that is the releasing of karma, which is just imbalanced energy. The more you hold back, the more karma you're accruing, the bigger this gap becomes, the more uncomfortable it becomes, the more it's driving you to release that tension, and the more dramatic the snap of that rubber band is. And it's not a bad thing. Again, there are no bad things. You get a really big jump from that really big contrast that you experience. Seriously. It's a part of why, and Eckhart Tolle has talked about this, people who experience really significant suffering which yes they created for themselves people who experience that suffering get really big leaps they they are the ones who have the opportunity to quantum leap to really shift consciousness to awaken to ascend to make a different decision when you are in that pit of suffering driven to the depths of despair it pushes you to radically change your perspective and your experience. Because it's radical contrast. That's what it does. Here comes the lawnmower. I might pause for a second.
because I can't I can't talk over this. <laughs> I will inhale some grass probably. But that's what's happening. Um, the deeper we get into this pit, the more karma we accrue. us and benefits us always again it just has this snap back effect and so the further it's like it's the whole runner and chaser dynamic that applies internally as well <laughs> with your own masculine and feminine energy <coughs> the more your masculine energy runs from the feminine the, the stronger this pull on the rubber band becomes and the more dramatic that snapback is, and it's it's always gonna reach that point. It can't not. It, you always reach the breaking point. There is a breaking point here. I mean, the cup is just spilling out, literally. It, it is, the mind is shut down. There's been a fight against the shutting down of the mind, but it's happening anyway, because again, it's just, it's time for it. That was already here with the Seven of Pentacles. Um, I'm actually gonna keep going. Am I going to keep going? No. I want one more for some reason. This is a four card. Not a three and not a six. Uh, yeah, this doesn't work anymore. This isn't working anymore. <coughs> we tried. We tried to shut down the emotions. It's having this reverse effect now of it's it's overwhelming. We can't keep them down any longer. It's overwhelming the mind, the masculine aspect, uh, because it's just, it's fixated. It needs the nourishment. It's so wickedly unhappy because it's been pushing so hard against its own desires that it's just, now it's all just, it's spilling out. It is, uh, what is it like? It's, it's sort of like a battery discharging. Hmm, no, I, I don't quite have the words to express this, but there is, there's a rapid discharge that can happen when a large amount of energy is built up. Um, it's kind of like lightning. It's sort of what happens with lightning. All of this energy builds up in the cloud and it reaches this point where it just it, it can't hold on to it the pole towards the ground towards the nearest conductive surface on the ground overwhelms the cloud it, it overwhelms the bonds of the electrons that are, are brushing up against each other in the cloud and that breaks and forms this rapid massive discharge and that's just what this feels like is <laughs> it's a radical discharge um, because we can't hold it back anymore we, we just can't um, I'm actually gonna use yeah I'm gonna use the rider weight to clarify this bottom oh it's the sun and that looks familiar oh I don't it was in the other pre-shuffle that's right when we have the moon here and judgment but uh which now is poking out yeah uh, can't hold it back can't can't hold it back it's been a long time coming it's been held back a long time and now it's just popping out there's that page of pentacles again yeah Finally learning this lesson that emotion needs to flow. That's just it. It it has to be felt. It <laughs> that emotion needs to flow. I love tarot. That actually that's where the power comes from. When we are repressing emotion, we are giving that emotion power over us. If we want to feel free. We have to feel freely. We have to let the feeling be loose. 
and choose to do so. And that actually is where our power comes from, in the surrender to it, in the free expression of it, all of those things. What's on top? Oh, I got three cards by accident. There's a chariot, card of the soulmate cycle, which is on the move. I mean, it's on the move towards resolve. It's got to get away from the eight broken cups. There is an acknowledgement of contrast here, which is so important. Again, it is, it doesn't need to be a judgment of something to acknowledge that this is unwanted. You don't have to be pushing against it. In fact, there is so much power in surrendering to the experience of accepting this is, this is not what I want. This is not what I like. It's here, it's happening, and I'm not resisting it. In fact, I am appreciating knowing from this experience that this is not my desire. I couldn't know my desire with such clarity without this experience. And I'm not rejecting the expression of this moment. I am here, I am allowing it, I am flowing with it and in it. It is not wrong and it is not bad. In fact, it's serving me. It's good, clearly. It's good for me. <laughs> it is great data and I am grateful to experience it. But I'm not pretending it's, I'm not pretending it's something that it isn't. I am on the move now, away from this. And there's a free flowing happening. So let's talk about it. Uh, I mean, free flowing. I'm going to start with the Two of Swords. It's <coughs> a lot of swords here. Yeah, a, a lot of thinking instead of feeling. And now the feeling is just happening. Feelings are meant to be felt, not thought about it would it would seem to be logical it is in fact logical but the mind being highly illogical will tell you otherwise why is the two of swords here tell me about this two of swords oh i just had cards flip over look at that flip straight over okay okay Two of Swords. There's that Seven of Cups again. Ah, it's just this emotion. We've tried so hard to keep it back. It's just a flow. It's an influx. It's, it's a lot. It's just a lot of emotion. And we've tried so hard. I've got... Hang on. I don't know how I want to read these. These came out together. Two of Wands and that Eight of Pentacles again. The old ways of doing things are not working. The distractions are not working. In fact, they're making it worse. They are making it worse. Every time we distract ourselves from the emotion, it gets bigger. It gets bigger and meaner and stronger and it just comes back with a vengeance. It's there to flow, it's there to be felt. And it's time for it to be felt. I wanna keep these together here. Um, yeah, because there's, there is this realization, there's a frustration with how the emotion is sort of ruling us but it's ruling us because of our refusal to feel it, to acknowledge it. It's ruling us because we're viewing it as a threat and we're trying to hold it down. It's controlling us because we're trying to control it. That's how it always works with energy. You have to let go. You have to let it flow, let it to the surface, let it express, let it out what's underneath that. Yeah, there's the moon again. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this. The, there's something about... I mean, yeah, I can take the surface reading of it, of somebody who rejected a cup, now wants that cup, 
And that's true. I mean, I can't deny that. that there's something deeper here. A realization of just how much we've rejected ourselves in this. Because that's a part of it too. Rejecting your own emotions, saying that they shouldn't be there, that's rejecting a part of you. You aren't your emotion, you are the experiencer of it, but that that is self-expressing through you. That is energy, your energy expressing through you. And it's not wrong, and it's not bad, and it's not something that shouldn't be there. And when you tell any part of the moment, which is yourself cumulatively, that it is wrong or should change, you're telling yourself that, and that's not true. That itself is a, is a separation from yourself, from your higher self, from the full perspective of your source, which sees and perceives and accepts all things in the present as exactly as they should be. And when you judge any part of the present moment as something that shouldn't be there, especially including your own emotions, you are diverging from the perspective of your full self. And it doesn't feel good. <coughs> it doesn't feel good. Interesting. Um, I wasn't going to pull this out horizontally. But now I'm curious. And I, I think I actually am. So what would be right with the Seven of Cups? There's that Page of Wands. I know who's going to show up somewhere here. Yeah, it's... There's nothing to be afraid of. It's time to, to treat emotions with curiosity. They're not a threat. Be curious about yourself. What is arising within you? It doesn't have to mean what you think it means. Just let it be there. Just ask it. Ask it. Ask it to express itself. Play with yourself. Experiment. Run the experiment for yourself of what happens if I just allow this emotion to express. this feeling of anxiety or anger or guilt or shame or whatever it is and I just let it be there and more than that I sit with it and I look at it and I don't tell it that it's wrong and I don't feel threatened by it I just let it happen and in fact I ask it to express itself I speak to the emotion and say you're welcome here I see you, I honor you, I acknowledge you. What is it that you would like to say? What would you like to share? Just that. Be curious about it. What's read with the uh, Two of Wands and the Eight of Pen of BF? It's time to let it out, oh my God. This is what causes the hurt is the fear of our own feelings. Sorry. It's what it is. And, and this is what's driving it, too. It is that depth of suffering that drives us to choose something different because we don't want to hurt anymore. The answer, the way to not hurt anymore, is to stop holding on to that hurt and to let it out, to speak it out, to acknowledge it. First, the first step is you have to acknowledge the pain. You have to acknowledge the hurt. This is something I am learning personally and repeatedly, is how to acknowledge my own painful feelings. contrast again there's there's nothing that went wrong with feeling pain there's nothing wrong with pain it's 
not bad. It's not a threat to your being. It's here to teach us. That's it. It's here to be information. And in order to be that information that serves us, we have to let it be. Even pain is not a thing to be afraid of. Fear is not a thing to be afraid of. Anxiety, guilt, shame, these are not things to fear. They're not, they're not things to judge. They're not things to be worried about. They're things to just honor, to look at, to witness. When we just witness them, they're free to teach us. We don't have to try. We don't have to add anything. We aren't the ones to derive the meaning from it. The meaning is in the expression, is in the allowance. It, they're there to be allowed. That is the meaning. Okay, tell me about this. It's a, it's a reversed Ace of Cups, but it's... It's spilling. It's been repressed for so long um, that it's just overflowing. It's like regurgitating. It's crossed by this Four of Swords. very much an I can't take it anymore kind of energy. I can't hold it back, hold it in. It's gotta come out. Our buddy, our buddy the Burger King can't hold it back anymore and the deck was just splitting down here on the star with death underneath. Yeah, can't hold it back anymore. Uh, what's under that Burger King? I can't hold it back anymore. It's a 10 of wands. It's too fucking heavy. This breaks to an ace of wands. It is that damn breaking. It's just the masculine energy, the masculine aspect that tries to control the emotions, that sees quote-unquote power in that because it's afraid of vulnerability, it's afraid of free expression, has been overpowered by the emotion. Uh, I, I don't know that it's getting through to the brain that, oh, this is, this is how we do it, this is how I do it. I, I see that I've been hurting myself by not expressing. I'm not sure that that's happening necessarily. It's just coming out. <coughs> it just can't be held in anymore. What's on top? Yeah, there's a four of wands. It's not working not working. I am not, this can be anything. Yes, it's a card of marriage, uh, but it really is just anything that is representative of stability that we held on to. Again, the King of Wands tries to control, tries to hold on. Attachment, resistance, whether you are holding or pushing, they're the same thing. And both of them generate suffering. And there is, this is, it's just, the house is coming down. The thing that we tried to hold on to, oh no, I'm getting Michelle Branch again. Why did, she popped into my dream the other night? And it was that song, the one thing that I tried to hold on to. Goodbye to you, I can't sing right now. <laughs> to everything that I knew You were the one I loved The one thing that I tried to hold on to Yeah Not, uh, not a song about a healthy relationship <laughs> I, I can say that I mean Yeah, anyway Love is not care Love does not cling Does not hold on It's unattached It's free It's careless It's fearless 
It doesn't give a fuck. It's it's here to be free and support freedom. What's right with the King of Wands? Oh, that Eight of Swords. I know I saw that down here too. It's driving it's driving them batshit insane. And that's a part of it. The emotions holding it in, trying to keep this together, trying to keep it down, whatever. It's it's driving. That is what's driving them crazy. The boundary is the burden. Trying to control controls you. Freedom is the foundation of happiness. It's the foundation of your being. When you are in a state of controlling, which is always two-way, you are not in alignment with your power. And so you are not feeling good. Uh, it's all falling apart, though. And the more we try to grasp at it, the more quickly the, the it just disperses. I mean, it's trying to hold on to water. Okay, so why? Why? Yeah. It's just all coming up. Everything they've tried to hold back. It's just coming up. It's like every fear is coming true. <laughs> and I mean... Yeah. Uh, again, when you try to control things, those things have control over you. When you push against something, such as a fear, you just give that thing more power. You just call it further into your existence. Really. If, you know, you're desperately afraid of being robbed and you have you install all of these fancy security systems and this and that but you're and you're, you're always hearing about people getting robbed and you're reading about it and you're you're trying to be quote-unquote prepared you're just raising your likelihood of being robbed that's it you're just putting out more of that energy of robbery rob rob me because that's what your focus is and Again, it's not a punishment, ever. Everything is always balanced by the universe and happens for your benefit and the benefit of all. But the more that you push against something, anything you push against, you make bigger. Anything you resist, you add strength to. Uh, it, it's that rubber band effect, too, of just the further you try to run from this, the, the further you fight it off, the more it's drawn to you and the bigger that snapback effect is. But there's no reason to feel fear. It's, it's given fear way too much power. Again, the way to escape this <coughs> is the self-created prison. The way to escape is to see that you're not stuck. It's to just realize there's nothing stopping you. There's nothing to be afraid of. The way to be free of fear is to realize fear is not something to be afraid of. You can let it exist and not let it rule you. And then it, you are allowing. You are allowing the free flow of it. It's not controlling you. You're not putting out more of this energy that's, that's calling it. You're not holding it in. You're letting it flow freely and then it can move on it can move through you it, it's fear is not a thing to listen to ever it is not a reason for any decision except maybe to lean into it to acknowledge oh there's fear here i see that that means it's an illusion that means there's a part of ego that's responding to this and that's okay i'm not threatened by that I'm so big that I can feel fear and not have it affect me. <laughs> so here it is. Let me invite it to express itself. It doesn't change my perspective. I don't have to react to the fear. I'm still good. I'm still the stable, eternal being that I am. So big and so stable that I cannot buck this current of well-being, even in feeling fear even in feeling anxiety, even in these things, I just acknowledge that they're there. I acknowledge 
that they, they don't have any control over me. And I demonstrate that by allowing them to flow, by not seeking to control them, by not rejecting them as a part of my current experience. So tell me about this five of swords. Tell me about this five of swords. Okay. We got a jumper. It's at the bottom again. Again, the Seven of Cups comes back. There's a choice here. A choice to feel. <clears throat> it's on top. Ooh, yeah. Ten of Swords, all of these swords, it's coming to a close. It's coming to a head. This bullshit, the short-sightedness, the confusion of, I don't know which, which one do I pick? Well, you pick the one that feels good. That's how you choose. You follow your heart. That's, that's how it works. Not your mind, not the logical whatever. You follow what feels good. There's an end of this short-sightedness. Yeah, because we've been keeping ourselves out in the cold. Uh, there's that analysis paralysis, too, of the realization if I don't pick something, then I get nothing. That I'm choosing nothing. I'm, I'm not, yeah, exactly that. It, then all of it disappears. If I don't pick one of these, if I don't trust my intuition, my heart, and just go for it, I get none of it. I take away the option. If I don't ask, it can't be a yes. It's automatically a no. I, I didn't give them a chance to say yes. It's just no. What's right with the Ten of Swords? The chariot. It's time to get a move on. It is time for this energy to come to balance. It's been held back long enough. Yes, it's the card of the soulmate cycle. It's the card of cancer, which we are in right now. Yeah. Yeah. But which Mercury is moving out of, it doesn't matter. It's time to pull up the big boy, big girl pants and get real with this shit. And let, let the truth be spoken, let the emotions be felt, let them be known. That's the only way this works, that's the only way we get victory is following the heart. And when we choose to follow the heart, nothing else matters, the outcome doesn't matter. It only matters that we did what was right for us, what felt right for us. That's it. And it doesn't matter if you get the job, if you get the girl, if you get the house, none of that matters. What matters is that you took a shot. Shooters gotta shoot. You took a shot, you followed your heart. That's it. That's how you balance your own energy. It was never about that thing. You don't need that thing to balance your energy. You don't need that thing to feel good. You just gotta trust yourself. That's where the good feeling comes from. Feeling the guidance, which comes from your emotion, which you can only hear when your heart chakra is open, when you're willing to feel the feelings. Choosing to feel the feelings, follow the feeling, and then that's it. All that matters is that you were willing to feel and follow. And you've done it. You've done it. You've balanced your energy, which feels good, which feels like satisfaction, it feels like pride in yourself, it feels like self-assurance, it feels like working with the universe, like the universe is supporting you, even, again, if that situation doesn't turn out in the specific way that you might have hoped in the first place, you trust, well, this is for the best. Rejection is divine protection. I believe that. I took my shot. I, I did it. I followed myself. Instead of shutting down my own feeling, my own intuition, I followed it. That's the only thing that matters. That's where my true victory is versus the false victory of thinking the victory is in control over, is in not doing the thing. No, the victory is in feeling, is in letting the feeling flow, not controlling it, letting it guide you, letting it move you. And then re releasing the outcome. And yeah, that's where the new understanding is gained. You, you feel your connection with the universe. You feel the flow of your own energy. You feel how it moves and then you follow it and then it balances and that feels good. And it has nothing to do with anything outside of you. 
it doesn't matter what events transpired, what changed or didn't change. It matters that you felt the flow, you were open to feeling it, you acknowledged that feeling, you made a conscious choice to follow it in spite of whatever argumentations were in the mind, rational or not, you said, I'm going to follow this feeling because I feel like it. And then you feel good for following your own intuition. That's it. That's the whole secret of feeling good. Surrendering, feeling emotions, following them, rinse and repeat, continuing that process, embracing the full moment for what it is. Uh, just that, all of that, all of these are following your energy, accepting it, allowing the flow, and inviting it to continue to express freely. I mean, that's the whole secret. <laughs> so, <coughs> I'm going to pull three more cards and get out of here. Final message, just to see if there's anything else anything else that the universe wants to say and remember that it's all yourself there is nothing ultimately that exists that is not yourself it's all just you so what's there to be shy about what is there to be embarrassed or disappointed about it's all just you you playing charades playing a game with you so just have fun with it that's it that's it what else do you want to say, universe? Three cards and a bottom card. Oh, I'm pulling from the bottom today. I'm pulling from the bottom today. Wheel of Fortune. Knight of Pentacles. Things are moving. Judgment. And the Nine of Pentacles. Crossing that Knight of Pentacles. Yeah, it's time for the stuck to get unstuck in a big fucking way. I mean, can I say, is there any greater illustration of that other than this? I mean, <laughs> big time movement, technically, eh, it doesn't matter. We got stuck, we got stopped energy, that is moving, that is moving, that is moving. Two of these are major arcana, which means divine movement, which means this is the hand of God, of Source, coming in and pushing this. You don't, you don't stop the Wheel of Fortune. You don't stop. You don't choose when judgment happens to you. It happens. And then we have almost major arcana, liberation energy, and one of the finest energies of the Empress as well. Underneath that, this strength is it's fueled by major arcana. So basically, we have this little bitty... It's a court card, but it's, it's minor stopped energy that's being pushed from all three sides by divine inspiration feeling impulse impetus saying go go and feel good go forth and feel good follow feeling face the emotions face the fear it's not there to stop you it's there to be moved through Yeah, uh, just big time blockages being plowed over, being washed away. And uh, again, this feeling of you can't stop it. You cannot stop the wheel of fortune. You can't stop your path of destiny from unfolding before you. you can't fall off it either. You can't stop your blessings from flowing to you. And you cannot stop emotion. You can't. It's not there to be judged, it's not there to be repressed, it's there to be felt and expressed. And that's it. That's it. It doesn't have control over you. It's just there to flow freely. It's not a threat. It doesn't mean anything. It just, it, it's, does it mean something for water to flow down a creek? It's just there to flow. It just wants to flow. That's it. Let it flow. You don't have to attach, don't attach anything to it. If it's good feeling, then follow it. If it feels good to follow it, then follow it. If it feels bad, then don't follow it. Then turn the other direction. Consciously. Deliberately. Not in the way that is running from it, but the way that is acknowledging. This is contrast. I honor it as contrast. It's not wrong. 
it's not bad it's serving me and I appreciate that and what is it that it's here to tell me let me ask it directly what is this experience here to tell me and I can only find that out by feeling not by thinking about it not by trying to puzzle it out with my brain that's not gonna work that only ends in the confusion and more of this no let me ask it what is this feeling here to show me what direction is it pointing me and really all I ever even need to do it, it doesn't need to give me any other information I'm just here to surrender to it to deliberately allow it to express to allow it to flow to be the great allowing being that I am that is non-judgmental non-resistant and non-attached and simply bear witness to this that's how mighty and stable and secure and truly well I am let me be who I am that's it that's all I got I've talked <laughs> myself almost hoarse <laughs> and I'm hoping that my boss isn't here but you know shit's what it is um have a beautiful day have a blessed afternoon i do intend that this resonates if it does let me know and uh yeah you know i'd like to know leave a comment like subscribe if you feel so inclined but just have a good day all is as all should be let it be and truly and always and always i absolutely love you